When choosing a microphone, you need to consider the sound source and the equipment that the microphone will connect to. In other words, the mic needs to be compatible with both the acoustic characteristics of what you're miking and the electrical characteristics of the sound system or recorder that you're using. If it isn't, you might have problems with noise, low level, or no audio at all. The specifications that relate to connectivity are collectively known as the microphone's electrical output. The sensitivity or output level of a microphone is defined as the voltage of its output signal when it is exposed to a certain sound level. A more sensitive mic puts out a higher voltage than a less sensitive mic, assuming that the incoming sound level is the same. A more sensitive mic can pick up quieter or more distant sound sources, while a less sensitive mic usually works better for loud or close sound sources. If you try to use a less sensitive microphone on a quiet source, you'll need to turn up the level on your mixer or audio interface to compensate. Depending on how quiet your equipment is, this may create hiss. Listen to the difference as we record a person speaking as they might when recording a podcast. Here's the more sensitive mic. He wrote down a long list of items. Now here's the less sensitive mic. A siege will crack the strong defense. The sensitivity of a microphone can be specified as a voltage or in decibels above or below one volt. Because microphone signals are typically less than one volt, the decibel figure is a negative number. A higher number means the microphone is more sensitive, while a lower number means the mic is less sensitive. The sensitivity specification is meaningless unless you know what sound pressure level, or SPL, the mic was exposed to when it was measured. Most microphones are tested at a sound pressure level of 94 decibels, also known as 1 pascal. You might see either notation, but they mean the same thing. The impedance of the microphone is important because it affects how it interfaces with the next device in the audio chain and its ability to be used with long cables. A low impedance mic, with an impedance of less than 600 ohms, can be used with cable lengths of 1,000 feet or more with no loss of sound quality. For this reason, professional microphones always have low impedance. A high impedance mic, with an impedance of more than about 10,000 ohms, should not be used with microphone cables longer than 20 feet. With longer cables, the sound can become dull or muffled. A microphone's wiring configuration affects the signal's tendency to pick up electrical noise or hum as it passes through the cable. A microphone can be configured with either a balanced or an unbalanced output. A microphone is said to have a balanced output when the signal is carried on two conductors with a separate connection to the metallic shield inside the mic cable. The signal on each conductor is the same level but opposite polarity. When connected to a balanced input on a sound system or recorder, this configuration is very effective at rejecting electrical noise and hum and is essential for longer cable runs. An unbalanced microphone output carries its signal on just one conductor with a separate connection to the metallic shield inside the mic cable. An unbalanced connection is not very effective at resisting electrical noise and hum, so unbalanced microphones are typically used only with shorter cable runs. However, most modern professional microphones have balanced outputs, so as long as you're connecting to a device with balanced inputs, this is not an issue. The most common connector used for balanced configurations is the XLR type. A three-pin male version is used for outputs, while a three-socket female version is used for inputs. There are some specifications that only apply to condenser microphones because they relate to the electrical circuitry that is part of a condenser mic. The circuitry inside a condenser microphone generates a small amount of hiss, which is called self-noise. It's specified in decibels, and the lower the number, the quieter the mic is. Low self-noise is especially important if you're recording quiet voices or instruments, or the mic will be located relatively far from the source. The maximum SPL is the loudest sound that a condenser mic can handle without overloading the internal electronics and causing distortion. This is important if you will be positioning the mic close to a loud source, such as a guitar amp or drum. Some condenser mics include a switchable attenuator, or pad, that reduces its sensitivity. This extends the microphone's ability to handle very loud sounds without distortion. 
most pads allow the mic to tolerate sounds that are 10 to 20 dB louder. The difference between the maximum SPL and the self noise is called the dynamic range of the mic. This is essentially the range of sound levels that the microphone can work with. A wider dynamic range lets you use the mic in a wider variety of conditions. Most condenser microphones are powered by phantom power from the mixer or recorder. The required voltage and current consumption will tell you if the microphone will work with the inputs on your mixer or recorder. Phantom power is a DC voltage, usually between 12 and 48 volts. Some condenser microphones can operate on a wide range of phantom voltages, while others require exactly 48 volts. Make sure that your mixer or recorder can supply the voltage that your condenser mic needs. The microphone's electrical output gives you a better understanding of its capabilities and how it will work with your equipment. By understanding microphone characteristics like electrical output, you'll be able to choose the best mic for any application and get better results when recording or using a sound system. For more information about microphone specifications, visit Shure.com.